Welcome to Bet on the NFL Week 13. I am Kelly Stewart at Kelly in Vegas on Twitter. Wow, I cannot believe we made it to Week 13. And I cannot believe that there is a football game kicking off on Wednesday, basically at 1 o'clock on the West Coast. So we got to get to it. Let's bring in our favorite Steelers guy at Marco D'Angelo, or at Marco in Vegas, Marco D'Angelo, Yanni Corrales at Greek underscore gambler. Gentlemen, let's get to it. We have no Thursday night game. This whole schedule has just been kind of a roller coaster ride, but we're going to get straight into our primetime game for this week. That is the Kansas City Chiefs versus the Denver Broncos. This one is sky high. The Chiefs opened a 13 and 13 point home favorite. It's already up to 14. Do we see a 14 and a half? I don't know. People are already betting the over as well. Looks like 51 is pretty much the consensus with our friends here in Vegas. VR, I'm actually going to start with you. How high does this Kansas City line get after what we saw from the Denver Broncos last week? No quarterback. Crazy situation there. We're still forced to play the Saints. Got their asses kicked. The Chiefs get away with another one and uh, an escape here. The Denver Broncos and the Kansas City Chiefs used to have a great rivalry. Not so much anymore. I'd be surprised if it got through the 14. I think if it gets through that, you're going to see some buys at 14 and a half. Um, but I think you'd have to get a lot of KC risk going into Sunday night for them to have to go through that 14. Because remember, when you're getting into double digits, casual bettors tend to try to get creative. They use teasers. They use money line parlays. They're not too motivated to lay double digits at minus 110. So I don't think the exposure and the risk is going to be so high that they have to try to get Denver money at 15 or higher, especially with Locke coming back. Um, but personally, I haven't bet this game. And again, I can't stress that enough. Um, we're asked questions and opinions on particular games. That doesn't mean I have a bet on it, but I'm going to give you a pick if I'm asked. If you want to back my opinion with your money, that's on you. I'm telling you which ones I'm backing with my cash. Um, this one, I haven't made a move at all. I haven't bet the side, haven't bet the total. Um, but being asked what I like, I lean to the Denver side. I think this uh, line's a little bit too high, and here's why. Usually, I'd look to fade Denver. Here's why. You're getting your starting quarterback returning. That perception's going to force bookmakers to shade the line towards that bias. The team's got their star back. They're ready to play. But this is unprecedented because you have a quarterback in lock who's terrible this season. He's got seven touchdowns, 11 interceptions. and. 1,700 yards throwing. So he's not the answer. It's not as if, oh, Locke's back, so we need to now start betting Denver again. No one was looking to bet Denver with or without Locke. Um, so I think this is a little different situation of an injured quarterback now getting the starter back. Uh, you have to approach it differently. It's not like Rodgers is returning for Green Bay. Uh, so I think that is why I do look to the Denver side. It is an upgrade over what we saw last week from Denver, but I think the recency bias of just how bad they looked, even with a non-quarterback, um, I, I think the line's a little bit too high. I haven't bet it, but I think the value's on Denver. Um, just my take. Yeah, I'm with you, VR, and I tweeted that uh, on Sunday. I said, look, Taysom Hill, 17, this is too many points. I did not say run to the window and bet it cash hand over fist on the Denver Broncos. Exactly. I feel like I'm with you here. This line is too high. I, I guess we'll see how Sunday plays out because you're right, though. We do know that the bookmakers tend to adjust. We saw it with the Monday night game with the Seahawks and the Eagles. If you bet it early with Seattle, you got the cash. If you waited until right before kick, you were holding a losing ticket. Marco, your thoughts on this AFC West matchup? I, I really don't know what to make of it. I know that I'm a technically the Denver Broncos resident fan of the group, but I'm not. I haven't been a fan since they won the Super Bowl. That was the last time I cheered for them without backing them with actual dollars. Uh, Locke, not a good quarterback. Defense is in disarray. They're, they have some weapons, though. Can they keep it within two touchdowns? Oh, Kelly, I mean, first off, let, let's talk about Denver and, you know, how badly they got screwed last week uh, having to play the game with no quarterbacks. And yet here we are an hour from kickoff as we're taping this with the Baltimore Ravens that got their game moved 
three times to accommodate the Ravens. I don't understand that from the NFL. I think if they want to make this game fair after what they did to the Broncos last week, the Broncos should get five downs instead of uh, four for the game. That would even things out a little bit. Uh, so, you know, if the NFL wants to run with that, go ahead. You don't even have to give me credit for that. Uh, but for this game here, I'm going to look at the total. And the situation's going to be uh, why Kansas City needs to run up the score. They don't. This is not college football. We don't need style points. Uh, they're going to get a lead. Denver's going to struggle on offense. Doesn't matter who's in there, quarterback, because just as Johnny said, you look at the numbers this year for Drew Locke, they're pitiful. They, you know, they can't move the football. In the last seven games, they've only topped 20 points twice in the last seven games. The two teams they did that against were the Chargers and Atlanta, who have bad defenses. I just don't see them putting points up on the board. That doesn't mean I want to run and take Kansas City laying the points because Kansas City, all they got to do is win and move on. Uh, they're in a race with the Steelers to get the home field advantage. Steelers are undefeated. They've got one loss. Their mission, get in, get out, and move on to the next game. This is not a threat on their schedule. Plus the fact it's a second meeting. They already pounded Denver in Denver. Uh, it was a blowout, 43-16. to 16. Now, if you remember that particular game, that score is not indicative of the way the game went. Uh, Kansas City, I think, had a pick six in that game. I think they had a kickoff return in that game, and it just made it look much worse than it is. I'm going to bet the under here, and it's at 51. I'll wait till Sunday because I think this thing is going to go higher. You're going to get the people that are going to come in. The average better, when they see a big number as far as the point spread goes, automatically in their mind, they think over. They associate, oh, oh Kansas City's minus 14. This is going to be an over because they got to score a lot of points to cover the spread. No, they don't. The other team's really bad. That's why the score, the spread is as high as it is. So I'm going to look at this one, and I'm going to look to the under. And as far as the line itself moving, the 14 to 14 and a half, um, it might get there to 14 and a half. Normally on a Sunday game when you have a favorite, you're going to have a lot of live money line parlays, is a said. The problem is, if you're throwing, and they will, people will throw, it makes me laugh. Somebody will have a, a three-teamer and say, oh, shit, let's just make it a four-teamer and throw Kansas City in there. That does nothing to your parlay. You're laying a minus 1,100 if you want to bet the money line. So the books don't care how many times you throw Kansas City in there because all they need is one, one game to screw you up and you're done. And if you do and are live to the uh, Kansas City play at night, you can't even hedge it anymore because you're not getting any value on 1100, you know, the last leg at 1100 to make that parlay worth anymore. So I'm on the under. Enjoy the game as much as you can. I think Andy Reid uh, reverts back to old Andy Reid for one week. And, you know, we got a lead. Let's just run the football. Let's not get anybody hurt and move on to next week. That's how I see it. All right. That concludes our primetime segment for this week. Don't forget to check out our Monday night football segment. we got a doubleheader coming up this next week. Excited. So tune in every Monday at noon. We're coming live. Bet on it. We're going to take a quick commercial break. But when we come back, we're going to go inside those Westgate look ahead lines. Every Monday at wagertalk.com, all plays are just $9. This even includes top-rated 5% plays, which normally sell for $40. There's no better day to get winning picks than $9 Mondays at wagertalk.com and our sister site, sportsmemo.com. Some companies have a Cyber Monday sale, but here at Wager Talk and Sports Memo, we have a Cyber Week sale. With our Cyber Week special, you can spend less than $100 per month for the next six months, and you will get every play your favorite handicapper releases. Let's suppose you already signed up for a subscription. In that case, this will add an additional 180 days and extend any current package you have. No one deserves a gift more than you, so why not treat yourself to the best gift of all and get one, two, or even three cappers for only $599 each. This offer expires Sunday, December the 6th at 11.59 p.m. Pacific Time. Welcome back to Bet On It. This is one of the best segments in terms of a handicapping perspective. I love looking inside those 12-day numbers from the Westgate. We're going to start off with VR. VR Cincinnati at Miami. Miami opened a 10.5-point favorite. Now is up to 11.5. 
I guess I just don't get it here. What did Miami do last week? Beat up on the Jets? I mean, it's a slight move, not too significant. And I think it's based more on Cincinnati just not being able to win football games. But I agree with you. I mean, they have been covering and keeping game close against the spread. They've been one of the best teams in the NFL this season. I think they're what? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and three against the spread. Not too bad. Um, and now they're getting all these points from Miami. But on the flip side of that coin, this is a Miami team that continues to outperform the betting market. Over the last six weeks, I don't think any team has done better ATS, meaning outperforming, than they have. Other than that loss at Denver, they outperformed the spread by double digits, I think in five of their last six. So I understand it. It's not too significant. Um, but I don't know any groups behind that move. So I don't know how sharp it is. All right. The Miami Dolphins, the new New England Patriots, it appears, at least yeah. for the next couple of weeks. Cleveland at Tennessee. Tennessee opened a three and a half point favorite. Now is up to five and a half. Marco D'Angelo, what say you? Yeah, we're going to probably end up seeing some sixes here because Tennessee, this is the public perception game of the week, Kelly. And we'll be talking more about this game later in the show in a couple spots for me. This is a total overreaction. Tennessee beat up on Indianapolis last week, and I was quite happy with that. But the reason for it, one of the key reasons was uh, Indianapolis was banged up on the defensive line. And so that's not what you want when you are facing Derrick Henry. And he ran wild against uh, the Colts last week. And then on the flip side, people are looking at Cleveland. They're saying, my God, you know, they had all those low scoring games at home. Then they go out on the road and play Jacksonville and they were life and death to beat Jacksonville. They had to uh, thwart a two point conversion at the end of the game to avoid overtime. So everybody's jumping on the Tennessee bandwagon. Do me a favor, continue to do so. Drive this line up as high as you can. I'll be talking about it a little bit more, Kelly. Later in the show, it is not justified. I love to hear it. All right, VR, the Los Angeles Rams are now a three-point favorite on the road at Arizona. Arizona opened up as a one-point favorite. This one's very perplexing to me. Uh, not sure where this line moves coming from. The Rams off that loss. To the Niners, I know that Arizona missed a late field goal, didn't get the win at the Patriots, which was my best bet. I will take that all day long. But trying to really figure out here why this line move, nobody significant hurt. What am I missing here? I'm going to tell you exactly why. The analytics guys love this Rams team. We have it every year where there's that one or two teams where their stats and the data doesn't reflect the actual record where the advanced analytics guys will tell you, wait, this team's 12 and four, but they're actually an eight and eight football team that just got a little lucky, bounces went their way. Or the flip side, this eight and eight team is really a 12 and four team that just didn't do well in one score games or lost the turnover battle. Some randomness didn't go their way. And I think that's what we're looking here with the Rams because I'll be honest with you, um, guys that I truly respect when it comes to their NFL power ratings, and there's not that many out there, but they have the Rams as a top five power rated team. Um, a lot of sharp guys based on analytics. Again, completely different than records. They're looking at completely different stats and data points than what preview shows and, and a lot of uh, discussion you see on sports radio and stuff are talking about. And I think that's what you see here because otherwise they're a seven and four football team and they're about 500 against the spread one game over 500. So it's not as if they've been outperforming the betting market week in and week out. And it's like, wow, we just can't get a grip on this Rams team. They're just so much better than we think they are. That's not the case. It's just their stats are off the charts compared to their results. And I think that's why you saw such a strong move towards the Rams, because otherwise it really doesn't make sense other than Arizona, you know, not looking all that good of late, losing three of four and 0 and four ATS. But let's not forget, they were favored in three of those four games. They're now an underdog, completely different roles. All right, I'm going to keep an eye on that one. For some reason, it just seems very fishy to me. Marco, the no. Philadelphia Eagles got that backdoor cover for their backers. 
But it doesn't matter. Bookmakers jacked the lineup at Green Bay. Green Bay opened a six and a half point favorite, now up to nine and a half. I have a feeling there's numerous things in play here. Number one, protecting themselves in that teaser role. Absolutely. That's a key part of once this thing opened up, it, you know, six and a half was the look ahead line. First numbers out that we saw were seven and a half and eight, and that wasn't going to be there for very long uh, after the Monday night game. And Face it, Kelly, these two teams both played in primetime last week. Chicago, or excuse me, Green Bay played uh, Chicago on Sunday night football. Everybody saw them run rough shot over the Bears. And then we saw Monday night the futile attempt at offense for the Philadelphia Eagles. This is four straight weeks um, that they have failed to top 200 yards in passing. The one week, or excuse me, three of four, the one week that they did top 200 yards, it was 209, and I think ha- they've got about 50 of those yards on the final min- meaningless drive in which they backdoored Cleveland as well in that game uh, for the teaser cover that I was on. So it helped us uh, with the teaser on the Eagles that week. I can't play. It's justified, but it's not one that I want to look at. Uh, I would have looked at Green Bay for teasers in this one if we would have still been at eight. And Vegas knows that they would have got a ton of teasers. That's why you're seeing it where it's at, at the nine and nine and a half. And honestly, it probably gets to 10. Uh, The Eagles are just that bad. The offense, they can't do anything. If they wouldn't be playing in the NFC East, honestly, Kelly, they would have gone to the backup quarterback now. We would see Jalen Hurts in there. But that division is so bad, they're still alive in the division. And that's why they're going to continue to stick with Carson Wentz. They have no offensive line. He can't get any time to throw the football. They can't run the football. They're a bad football team that finds a way to get you in the back door. I'm sorry. (laughs) All right. You mentioned a lot of teasers. We'll get to the teaser segment here shortly. But last but not least, New England at the Los Angeles Chargers. Chargers open a one and a half point favor in the look ahead line. They are now a pick them. And even some plus ones here in some spots. VR, I was on the Patriots last week. Like I mentioned, I got lucky. Cardinals missed that field goal. Patriots got the W for me. I'm kind of looking the other way here at the Chargers for this week. I teased uh, New England last week. They came through for me. In fact, I I would have had a teaser for our viewers this week, a premium teaser. Um, But with this line moving the way it did, I don't have that anymore uh, because New England would have been the team that I wanted to use. Uh, with another team, but now there's no use in doing that now that they're down to a pick them. Uh, listen, I agree with this move, to be honest with you. Um, I think the wrong team is favored. I think New England's the better team, and we know that home field advantage doesn't mean anything, especially this year. Uh, so for me, I, I think it's warranted. I mean, listen, I, I get it. The excitement out of the Chargers, you got a quarterback now. Hopefully, he's the future. You're putting up points, 25 points per game. But your defense is allowing close to 28. So until you shore that up, you know, the defense has to catch up with the offense. Again, I I understand why the money came in on New England. I think it's warranted. Uh, But I think the books will get more than enough charger money on Sunday, especially if they end up being underdogs like it looks like it's going to be right now. All right, great stuff from these guys. We're going to move in to one of the most profitable segments this year, and that has been the teaser segment. We are teasing up through three and seven. It has been absolute money. VR just mentioned my best bet last week with the Patriots. I had them teased in a couple of different spots. I'm really excited to see who you guys have in this week's teaser segment. Marco, we're going to start with you. NFL week 13. Tell me what you got. Well, Kelly, I'm going to go a little unconventional this week with one of my teasers. And as you said, Kelly, the teasers have been profitable this season, and it's been my most profitable segment on the show, uh, 10 and 2 with the teasers. But we're going to go unconventional, and I'm going to go to the Cleveland Browns. Uh, Normally, the old school guys would not tease a team that's plus five and a half and tease them up. Uh, That's just something that they don't do. But Kelly, the lines have been so tight this year uh, with the games. And I had Ralph, you know, run the numbers for it, you know, earlier a few weeks ago. And it has been profitable taking these ones because I am still getting through six and seven. And I'm also getting through 10 and 11, which are also 
key numbers, not as key as the three, four, six, and seven, but then they are next on the list. This is a game where we're getting value to start with, as I talked about in the last segment, and Tennessee doesn't have a good defense. And they took advantage last week of an Indianapolis team that had injuries on the defensive line. Cleveland is just fine at stopping the run. They'll contain Derrick Henry. They're, nobody's going to stop Derrick Henry, but he's not going to run wild like he did last week. And Cleveland, throw out last week's game. They played a bunch of games where they played tight, low-scoring games for three weeks in a row because they played in monsoons in Cleveland. They finally went and played in good weather at Jacksonville, and they just took Jacksonville for granted. Jacksonville is horrible. They got one win on the season. They will come to play today. This is too many points to pass up with a team that has a decent defense and can score points. They can run the football themselves, and that will shorten the game. That's why I'm taking them on the first half. The second half of the teaser, we're going to go to one of the games that got moved to Monday night, or this one I think, I'm sorry, was scheduled, but it's got moved to Arizona because they've got problems in California and can't play the game. They are That's the San Francisco 49ers. I'm going to take them plus the eight and a half. This is a no-brainer for me. We're getting them through all of the key numbers that we need to get, taking them up. In the Buffalo Bills, they've been no bargain this year uh, defensively. They did a total role reversal from last year. Last year, they were all defense and struggled to score. This year, they're all offense, and they struggle to stop anybody, and that's why they can't get separation on teams. The 49ers are a very good coach team. The only negative to the game is the fact that San Francisco's coming off a monster win last week. But the fact that this is a Monday night game, they're going to come to play. I'll tease them up over the key numbers, get them plus the eight and a half. My teaser, Cleveland plus the points and San Francisco plus the points. All right, I just wanted to give a shout out to VR during the teaser segment because my teasers are already locked and loaded for this week because on the Monday show, when Seattle hit six, he said tease them down to a pick them or a half. So I've got one, two, three, four teasers pending for mm. Sunday already, and I'm sitting pretty with one leg in. So thank you to VR for pointing that one out because normally I don't tease the favorites down, but he mentioned the Sharp guys had played Seattle early. Obviously, uh, if they played a, if people played them late, they got a loss as far as the ATS goes, but that teaser was never in doubt. VR, I'm excited to hear who you teased this week. Um, I know you mentioned earlier that you were looking towards the Patriots. Now, not it's not available. Yeah, and again, I only use teasers. You could go back to week two, week three, week four of this show. I explained when I use teasers, where I think teasers are profitable, and how I think even casual bettors should approach teasers if they're going to need them. Um, and nothing jumped out for this week. Once the line started moving, they are started moving my way on some of the sides that I like. So it didn't make sense to tease them. It's not like I need to get more money down. The only reason, again, to tease is you can't get enough money down on a straight bet which isn't a problem in the NFL, or that teaser is going to increase my odds of, of cashing from 53, 54% up to 75%. And there's very few times six points is going to do that. And on this board, nothing just jumps out. Uh, but at least there's two sides that do go through that one teaser, the three and seven. And um, the two teams that stuck out, obviously first, Las Vegas Raiders, um, the squares game on the board. They're going to be teased pretty much uh, the, the heaviest tease side. Um, if the Raiders lose this game straight up, that'll be a big, big win for the Vegas books. It'll knock out so many money line parlays, so many teasers. So obviously the Jets on the money line is the Vegas sports books, you know, team of choice this week. Uh, but I'll go Raiders. And then Monday night, San Francisco, I think because they're at two and a half. So I could get them up through that three, through that seven, up to eight and a half. So Las Vegas minus one and a half, San Francisco plus eight and a half. I haven't placed that bet because there aren't, they're not two sides that I'm actually betting. Um, so there's no reason to tease them, but they do offer you numbers that are plus CV 
if you tease them long term. Hopefully that makes sense and you could profit off the information, if not the pick itself. Uh, because again, I'm not betting it, but if you do, I hope you cash it. Yeah, on, on Monday night when I did the Seattle teaser, uh, I did not look towards the Niners side. You guys both have the Niners side. I actually just placed a teaser with the Arizona Cardinals plus two and a half, the Niners plus two and a half up through that three and seven. Sometimes you can find advantageous numbers and I just did it. So thank you to both of you guys. All right, we're going to take a quick break, go through some of our commercials, and when we come back, we're going to find out whether it's a trap or a sandwich game this week from Marco. Of course, VR's got a Steam game this week and some TNA with Ralph Michaels. Get $25 in wager bucks added to your account after your first purchase at wagertalk.com and sportsmemo.com. This is just our way of saying thank you for joining the Wager Talk and Sports Memo family. Did you know every Tuesday is $2 Tuesday at wagertalk.com? We pick the hottest handicapper and offer his best bet for just $2. This is a great way to introduce yourself to the winning handicappers at wagertalk and sportsmemo.com. Welcome back to Bet On. And I know we normally go to the v to VR Steam game first, but I want to mix it up this week. I'm feeling, you know, extra feisty. So we're going to go to Marco first. Marco, I need to know, is the deli back open? The deli is back open. We a uh, couple weeks uh, we didn't have a sandwich game, but we had some trap games, and that worked out well last week. So let's see if the sandwich works as well. And for those of you from Pittsburgh, this will be a Permani's sandwich this week. We're going to be going against the Pittsburgh Steelers uh, and taking the Washington Football Team as our sandwich play. Now, guys, first of all, we are taping on Wednesday, and uh, full disclosure. The Steelers haven't played yet their game from last week. They are playing it literally in about 30 minutes. So we got to get this show done so Marco can watch some football. But I don't care what the result is of this game. Pittsburgh still fits the same situation, and here's why. Pittsburgh, they are pissed about this week's game. Let me tell you, Tomlin's not happy about it. Roethlisberger's not happy about it. The entire team is pissed that the NFL accommodated Baltimore the way they did. They moved this game not once, not twice, but three times. Now the Steelers, who got screwed already this season, losing their bye week when it was scheduled and had to take an unplanned bye week early in the season when they had already prepped for a game, they felt, uh, you know, they were upset about it then. But then they figured, hey, we're playing the Thursday game. It's against Baltimore. Then we're going to have 10 days off. Mike Tomlin told his team they're getting three days off after the uh, Thanksgiving Day game because they didn't get a bye week. Well, that didn't happen because the NFL changed the schedule. This is a big rivalry game for Pittsburgh that they're playing today against Baltimore. Win or lose, Pittsburgh's going to be in a flat spot. If they lose, the reason they're going to be in a flat spot is they're going to have their first loss of the season. I don't think that happens today, but if it does, you have a team that was undefeated that went this late in the season. When you lose that first game, you're going to be a little bit flat the next week because you don't want to talk about it. But when you get to 10 and 0, 11 and 0, you start thinking about that perfect season. So if that gets screwed up, then they're going to be flat. Now, the flip side is if they take care of business today and beat their arch enemy twice and beat them after they accommodated them three times moving the game, they're going to go and have to play on a short week again. They moved the Steeler game from Sunday to Monday to give them an extra day, but they're playing from Wednesday. Nobody's ever played on that short of a schedule. Bad spot for them uh, again, and they're playing Washington, who's been improved, Kelly. Since Alex Smith has taken over the reins, this team has played much better, and I commented to you a week or so ago when we used them that Washington, their defense, which was decent, is now even better because they're not on the field as long. Alex Smith is keeping the offense on the field for sustained drives now. That helps them. And the one key with Washington is they do bring pressure on a quarterback. As much as I love my Steelers and as much as I love Ben Roethlisberger, he is not a mobile quarterback. He's back there in the pocket. Yeah, he can keep a, dry, a play alive, and that's what gets him into trouble sometimes uh, because he's so big and he just doesn't go down. 
but they can put pressure on him and disrupt the passing game. This is a live dog in Washington. And if the Steelers do get through, they're going to have one eye on the game the following week against Buffalo. That's a key game. They have to travel to Buffalo, and I think that's going to be one of the danger spots for Pittsburgh in their undefeated season. Do I think they lose to Washington? Probably not. But I do think this game is going to be much closer than people expect. And we know Tomlin's history. He plays to the level of the competition. He's a double-digit favorite at home. No, I'm not doing it. I will be on the Washington football team. Marco, you love to hear it. You'll know why later on in the show. There is some nines out there, but it is headed to eight and a half. And there is even an eight with our friends over at Circa. So this one is plummeting and plummeting fast. Hopefully you guys can get that one in before it's too late. All right, VR. I know you always bring the heat with the steam game. Who is your steam game for NFL week 13? Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and take the Indianapolis Colts. Uh, just confirming where I use them at. All right. Um, yeah, I like the Colts in this game against Houston. <laughs> Lines three, minus 120 we're looking at right now. Um, I believe I bet it earlier, even used it on the money line. Um, listen, bottom line is, for some reason, this Colts team just continues to get disrespected. I mean, what do you have to do to get any respect from the betting market? I get it. They lose to Tennessee where they were three-point favorites. Now you're only a three-point favorite against Houston. And I get it. Houston's look good three of the last four weeks, but you need to slow down. That was against Jacksonville, against Detroit. The only decent win there was against the New England Patriots. And I think we're getting a little ahead of ourselves with this Houston team. Um, again, I've been high on Indianapolis all season long. Their defense from the beginning of the season was what was getting the job done. But now you're starting to see that offense is coming around. As long as Rivers keeps those INTs down, this team's going to be just fine. I get it. Watson's lighting it up. 24 TDs, five interceptions. It's tough to stop them. But I think this Colts defense is going to give them problems. And I don't think Houston's going to be able to keep up with the Colts. It looks like one of those games where Colts start to pull away in the second half. They're just too physical of a football team for the finesse Houston. I like the Colts here. I'll lay the points. Give me Houston as the steam play. This line will probably keep climbing. No surprise there. Yeah, the money lines are already varying across the board. I see minus 175, minus 190. So keep an eye on those as well. I'm with you, VR. Uh, Will Fuller now out for the Texans, probably Deshaun Watson's best weapon. So going to be a really interesting AFC South matchup. All right, it is now time to see our favorite guy, some TNA with Ralph Michaels. All right, it's time for the most educational part of the show, Ralph Michaels. Bring in the heat per usual with some T and A. You know, Kelly, I love proving adage is false. I also love proving adage is true. And, you know, how many times have we heard bet on good teams as a dog? Don't bet on bad teams as a favorite. And, guys, if you follow me on Twitter, go back and look at the charts because I broke it down by percentage, every five win percentages. But basically, I just wanted to get to the bottom line. When we're talking about winning percentage, it needs to be a win percentage of 70% or higher in getting points for it to be a meaningful 60-plus percent ATS record. And when you're losing as a favorite, it needs to be a win percentage of 30% or less and laying points when you're in the fade situation. So again, it's a chart I did on Wager Talk today. It's worth taking a look if you go to at CalSportsLV on Twitter and you can see the charts broken down. Couple systems, Kelly, that we've talked about on this show four or five or six times, they just continue to win. And I wanna make our viewers aware of those systems again. Teams that are on the road, off a home game, and their opponent allowed 400 yards or more in their last game. So the team you want to bet on is on the road. 
They were at home last week, and their opponent allowed over 400 yards. That system now 83 and 40, 67.5%. Now it says to play Denver against Kansas City. We'll take that one with a grain of salt. But it also has Minnesota next week against Tampa Bay. So mark your calendars on that. And one that I love, I know I've talked to you about it. It's really the momentum system. You bet on a team that wins straight up in ATS against an opponent that lost straight up in ATS and the lines between the threes. It makes perfect sense. You have an opponent that's equally matched with the line between the threes. One team off a winning cover, the other team off a loss and non-cover, 74% against the spread, 39 and 14. Kelly, are you either on the Patriots against the Chargers or the Houston Texans against the Colts? That system applies to both of those teams this week. I am not, Ralph. I am terrified uh, of both of those teams. Will Fuller out for the Texans. And look, Anthony Lynn had to break the announcement to his team today that they aren't going to make the playoffs. So hopefully that doesn't damper their spirits too much. I'm hoping we can get to one and a half. Maybe I could put the Chargers in a teaser. You know, I am I am stealing this next one from my good friend Mark Lawrence, and this is from his playbook newsletter. My database doesn't have this kind of information, but to me it makes so much sense. I wanted to share it on our viewers, and Mark, thank you for allowing me to do that. Uh, from his playbook, you know, if, you, if you're a subscriber, right on page two of his newsletter is uh, the bet you didn't know, and it's talking about an interim coach like Detroit has playing a division foe off a loss. So number one, you face this division foe all the time. You're a brand new interim head coach facing that opponent. So interims in that role are 35 and 54 ATS. But if the total is 40 and higher, so we're taking all the current coaches, interims are 11 and 34. And if the interim is on the road, those teams are only 5 and 20 against the spread. So uh, something that makes total sense to me. We always think, well, how do these new coaches do? Mark, I appreciate you uh, sharing that info with us. And a Raiders angle for all of those here in Las Vegas. Simple as can get. If you lose as an away favorite and you're an away favorite again, so... You were embarrassed, you went on the road, you did not win. You are now in a way favored again like the Raiders are. Going back to 2010, you are 27 and 12, 69%. And one final one, a uh, couple teams with good records. I think if you do the litmus test though between Tennessee and Cleveland, you know, most people are gonna say Tennessee is a significantly better team. So this system does apply to the Titans. If a team is at home, like Tennessee is, off a win as a dog, like Tennessee is, and both teams have win percentages of 70% or higher. So you have two quality teams. The home team, like Tennessee, 26 and 10, 72% against the spread. So, uh, you know, uh, I am a Browns fan at heart, but uh, I certainly won't get to the window with them. And let's also remember, the Cleveland Browns, their last 11 road games, 1-10 against the spread. They just do not play well on the road. Baker struggles. So Tennessee, a game that may be in my mix at the end of the week. Awesome stuff from Ralph, as always. Thank you, Ralph. And here's to a profitable NFL week. It's not a secret how much free quality information Wager Talk Sports Moment and the Gold Sheet produce. And next up, we're giving out the Wager Talk College Basketball Guide. This might be the most informative collection of sports betting info we've ever produced. We're covering returning starters, offensive, defensive, and tempo rankings, recruiting rankings, head coaching info and background, and so much more. Even if you are the casual basketball fan, head over to the Ralph Michaels page and download this amazing guide for free. 
Welcome back to Bet on It. NFL Week 13, and the dogs have been barking all season long. I'm excited to see who this week's barking dogs are. Yanni, I'm going to go to you first. Who is your barking dog for this week? All right, I'm going to make it. I, I wish we did. I wish we had this show. I know it's impossible to do, but like on a Saturday or Sunday of game day, the gold we could bring to the table, man. So much stuff in the NFL, especially comes late. Um, but here's something early, man. Detroit Lions plus the points against the Chicago Bears. Uh, gave it out three and a half. It's three right now. And the reason's simple. It's not my strongest bet of the week. Um, the bottom line, Chicago's got no business anybody, whether you're home or away. Here's the bottom line. This team's been favored one time this entire season. That was way back in September. You know what they did? They didn't cover the spread. And now they're favorites again. What have they done this season? So all of a sudden, let's start making them a favorite. They didn't produce as an underdog. Maybe they'll produce as a favorite. Makes no sense to me. Again, this isn't a bet on Detroit. What's the like about Detroit? Other than they had a couple extra days rest since they played on Thanksgiving or uh, nothing else to really like about this team. It's a, it's a bet against Chicago. Again, we've said it a few weeks ago with the Chargers, where they had no business being favorites. They went out there, they won the game, didn't cover. Next week, we bet the Chargers. Why? Because they were the underdogs. Completely different role. I may bet the Bears in the next few weeks, but not in the favorites role, unless it's a great situation, and this is not it. So give me Detroit plus the three, and uh, that's my dog for this week. I like that dog, especially after Matt Patricia and the GM just got fired from Detroit. Maybe we see a little fire lit under some Detroit Lion asses. Marco, tell me who your dog is barking for this week. I uh, wish that it was the Washington football team, but I know it's not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Scott, well, I could have used them as the barking dog, uh, but we used them in the other segment, which, Kelly, to make you feel good, though, my two best segments – have two teams that you like here, I hope. We're going with the Cleveland Browns in this one. I used them in the teaser segment. I talked about it when we talked about the Westgate lines. I'm using them again here against Tennessee, and here's why. Tough scheduling spot for Tennessee. They are coming off three high-profile games in a row, Kelly. If you go back, three weeks ago, they played on Thursday Night Football. They hosted Indianapolis, and they got their butts kicked. Then they come back the next week. They had to play the Baltimore Ravens. That game was hyped up because they are the team that knocked the team with the best record last year out of the playoffs. It was supposed to be Kansas City and Baltimore in the AFC championship game. Well, oh, sorry, Tennessee ruined that. They win that game. Then they come back last week. And last week's game, I was on Tennessee. That was, we hate to use the phrase must win games, but that was literally a must win for Tennessee because they were tied in the division. Yes, if they lose, they still had a chance. There would only be one game back. Oh, wait, that one game back would have actually been two games back because they lost both games to Indianapolis had they lost last week. So they couldn't afford it. They took advantage of an injury situation that Indianapolis was banged up on a defensive line. Derrick Henry ran wild. Indianapolis had some bad turnovers, and it snowballed into a lopsided score. What's that lopsided score do? It gives us line value, especially after Cleveland slept walk through their Jacksonville game. Cleveland is a live dog here. This is a team that's got the same record as Tennessee, and yet they are getting five and a half points, and we're even seeing some places where it'll start to tip to six. I like Cleveland. I like this game to go down to the wire. I cannot lay points with Tennessee. Just like uh, Ace talked about, you know, the Bears, you know, you can't lay points with them or look at a team as a dog, different ones. This is Tennessee. I can't lay points with them, not with that defense. They don't get separation. I will take the Cleveland Browns. And I'm going to go ahead, Kelly, go with a little sprinkle. I think the Browns win this game outright. I got Cleveland 28-27. You know, Marco, it's funny. I saw a meme on Monday that said Cleveland was eight and three. And then the caption was no one cares. And you're, you're right. It's all of a sudden last year was the year for the Cleveland Browns. They disappointed everybody. And this year they're exceeding 
their expectations, yet no one cares. So maybe they're flying just a little under the radar. I like both barking dogs. And if you guys can hear, my dog is actually barking right now, which is awkward. But that being said, it is time for our best bet segment. And hopefully that means the dog, my favorite game this week, is barking as well. I know I already alluded to it a little bit. I already teased it. Marco gave it away in his sandwich section. And that is because this is a bad scheduling spot for the Pittsburgh Steelers. As we mentioned, the Steelers should be kicking off here probably any minute. Marco's waiting anxiously in the wings for me to stop talking so he can watch this game. But I do think that the Washington football team has been playing better ball as of late. And no one really cares. No one's really giving them a lot of credit. Alex Smith is able to at least control that offense. And da- double digits at home is just downright disrespectful. This one sitting at eight, eight and a half, looks like across the board. I didn't want someone to think that I was lying about the 10. I played it earlier in the week. It's obviously off the board now, but it will return on Wednesday evening. Again, bad scheduling spot for the Steelers off Not only was it supposed to be a Thanksgiving game, then it was supposed to be a Sunday game, then it was supposed to be a Tuesday game, now it is a Wednesday game, and they have the Buffalo Bills on deck. Not necessarily an AFC rival, but it is a team that could be buying for, uh, you know, a little playoff position. We know that basically it's the Steelers neck and neck with the Chiefs for home field advantage, but the Bills have been playing well as of late. All you got to do is beat the team formerly known as the Washington Redskins, and get the hell out of Dodge. I like the football team catching double digits at home. VR, you are up. I need to know who your best bet is. You've been crushing these best bets, and I need you to keep it rolling for NFL Week 13. Yeah, and forgive me. There's, like, so much stuff coming in right now as we're doing this. It's like college basketball. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Are you telling me you have some gold for us? NFL, college basketball. Football, I swear to God, it's like I got props that just came in for this Pittsburgh game. I got so much stuff coming as we're doing this. This is crazy. Um, But here we go. Let's give a best bet for the people watching. And I'm going to make it simple. I'm going New Orleans Saints. I used this game, gave it to subscribers at minus three. I thought the line was going to climb. It's actually dropping. So it looks like some sharp money is coming in against me. And I'm going to keep it simple. I usually would never bet a team like the Saints. They've covered four straight games. They've won how many in a row? They're usually always going to be overvalued. And my goal is to get value to place good bets. I talked about it Monday. I like Seattle. Seattle at minus five, I could understand. Five and a half, maybe. Six and a half, not so much. Not a good bet. Again, we don't know it's going to land six. More times than not, it's not going to land six. But that was a perfect example of what happens when you place bad bets. And the difference between a winning and losing better is one every 20. If you go 10 and 10, you're going to go broke. The big is going to eat you up. If you go 11 and 9, you could make money and never have to do anything again in your life but bet sports. That one every 20. But if you take bad numbers, you bet bad, make bad bets, you're never going to get there. Those little bad bets are going to wipe out any edge you have. Laying six and a half on Monday night with Seattle and not passing because you liked it at five but missed it and saying I still want to bet because I'm going to watch it, that that maneuver you just you did wiped out any edge you could possibly have. So please remember, we do it for fun. I get it if it's entertainment. But if you're doing it for profit, place good bets. And I thought the Saints are a good bet because the reason is simple. Nobody is giving the team their respect they deserve. Why? Because we don't have Drew Brees behind center. The drop-off isn't as significant as we're making it out to be. But no one knows what it is because we haven't, we're all going off the perception of Drew Brees' big sample size, Drew Brees' career. But this year, at this age, I'm not all that sure Drew Brees would be lighting it up more than these guys are doing that they're putting in in his spot. Uh, So for me, I think that gives you an advantage for the Saints. You have a a really good football team that's being undervalued because their star isn't playing. He hasn't been playing for a while now, and they just continue to win football games and cover football games. This isn't a lot to lay. You just got to win the game. You should cover the spread. Go in there and beat Atlanta. They're phony. They got lucky against the Raiders. I had them as my 5% play, so I liked Atlanta last week, but not so much this week. Give me the Saints minus three. 
All right, we all got to the window with Atlanta last week, so thank you guys both for those. That was Marco's 5% play as well, and I believe it was a trap game from the show. Marco, what do you have for us this week in terms of a best bet? Well, I'm going to go with a game that uh, Ace already has as well, and I agree with it. We're on the Indianapolis Colts for our best bet, and the only thing that I can say good about Houston to start this is they got three extra days to prepare, but that is not enough. The Indianapolis Colts last week, as I pointed out numerous times, uh, got run over by Derrick Henry. There is no Derrick Henry on the Houston Texans. In fact, they don't run the football well at all. They've become a very one-dimensional team. Their running game consists of if Deshaun Jackson breaks out of the pocket and has to scramble for his life. When you're one-dimensional against this Indianapolis Colts defense, you're in trouble. Uh, the Colts will slow down Houston in this game. Now, anytime you take the Colts, yeah, you got to hold your breath with Phillip Rivers. Is he going to give you one of those, you know, bad passes that could turn into a pick six? Yeah, that's always a possibility. But I mean, you're never going to go in looking for the negatives on the game. He's played well more often than not this season. Also, last week's game, in addition to the injuries uh, that Indianapolis had, the other part why it was a bad game for them and we were on Tennessee is we had the revenge factor for Tennessee. I love taking revenging road dogs that lost the first meeting at home. And let's not forget, Indianapolis played a overtime game the week before against Green Bay. That was a big win. Even though they had Tennessee and they were playing for the, the division lead, that was a big game last week. So they were playing their third big game in a row uh, when they came on and took on Tennessee last week. They bounced back in a big way here. I've got them. Uh, Houston's defense, 30th ranked in the league. 30th. They are giving up 6.2 yards per play. The Colts will be just fine. I'll go ahead and lay the points with them. That's my best bet, Kelly. All right, we are going to take our last commercial break, but when we return, no, we're not. I did that last week, too. This is like, you know, one of these things where I got to be better at my job. We're going to take a commercial break. When we return, it is best bet time for college football, and I promise I found you guys a game that's not going to get canceled this week. Marco's coming off a 5-1 and one NFL Sunday, and the highlight was his 5% NFL high roller play on Atlanta, plus three, a 43-6 to six blowout winner. For the season, Marco's 5% NFL plays are hitting 67%. You will get all of Marco's plays on Sunday, highlighted by his 5% NFL high roller play. Get this special package for just $39. Go to Marco's homepage at wagertalk.com now to purchase this package. Marco will add plays to this package now through Sunday. Welcome back to Bet On It. It is now time for our college football best bets. And per usual, I'm going to go first. Now, I know my bet got canceled last week, so I'm going to run it back with the same team. And this is kind of a different reason why I'm playing it here. Iowa State Cyclones off that win over the Texas Longhorns. Matt Campbell, all the praise to you in the world, but he was so emotional. And why? The Cyclones have not won a conference game since nine, or I'm sorry, a conference title since 1912. I know that the Cyclones want to get to that Big 12 title game, and I do think they will get there. But they are off a really hard fought conference road win. And I like the other side. That's right. I like the West Virginia Mountaineers. I know I made the joke last week. I called them the Fighting John Murrays. For those of you that don't listen to my podcast, that's your own fault. And the, and the Mountaineers, frankly, got a, a needed bye week here. And I think that they're going to bring all that they can to Ames. I think a touchdown is just a few too many points here. I think this is going to be within a field goal. I think you have that big emotional high for the Cyclones, and it may come crashing down to earth. Hopefully they can still get away with the W. I'd like to see them play for a Big 12 title, but I think the Mountaineers keep it close. Seven is too many points. Marco D'Angelo, who is your best bet for this week in college football? Well, Kelly, I'll be rooting for you. I like your side in that one. And actually, uh, that win last week, Kelly, did cement them into the championship game. So uh, they're there. So you got the other reason for the letdown with your play. Love that play. I'm looking at a game here. People are going to think, Marco, what are you smoking? What are you doing? I am taking a winless team laying double digits. God, what am I doing? 
We're going to the Utah Utes here against Oregon State. Couple reasons here. Utah's only played two games. They're 0 and 2. Their season didn't get started with everybody else in the Pac-12 because they had the misfortune of both of their first two games being canceled. Uh, you know, you got to play games. You got to have repetitions. You got to have, you know, you can practice all you want to practice. It's not the same as a game. And this team, it's shown with their timing and everything being off. You want to know why they're 0-2, Kelly? They've got nine turnovers in their first two games. They've played sloppy, but this is game three. And they've played three weeks in a row. I think you're going to see a clean performance from Utah. And if they have a clean performance, this team can move the football. They also have a better defense than the team Oregon State played last week. Who, by the way, who was that team? It was Oregon. That was a monster, monster win for Oregon State. It doesn't matter what your season is. If you can knock off Oregon, because you're the little brother in every sport in the state of Oregon when it comes to matching up. And you know how that is, you know, Kelly. You know, in football, you've got the upper hand with Kansas State. But you know how it feels on the flip side with basketball with your rival. That was a huge win for Oregon State. They might still be celebrating. No, I'm sorry. You're not allowed to party and gather uh, right now. So uh, they're partying by themselves, <laughs> okay? This is a spot for a letdown from them. I am going to take Utah. I am going to lay the points. And as high as the line was, and if you'd say, my God, this, you know, double digits, why are you doing that with a winless team? Well, the first money that came in, and maybe Ace can confirm it if any of his groups are on it, the first move on this game went to Utah side. So we did see some sharp money there, in my opinion. I agree with it. I'm on Utah. Lay the points. All right, VR, have you seen anything as far as the Utes in any of your accounts? And then also give us your best bet for this week. No, I haven't seen much on that game at all, to be honest with you. And to tell you the truth, when I did college football, you know, I send the picks in last night. We do it so the producer could put them up. Um, the only bet we had made was Troy. And I bet Troy at minus three, and they're up to like five or six. So I'm not going to use them for the show. Even if they win by a touchdown, it's still not a good bet right now. So I wouldn't wouldn't use that. Instead, I'm going to have to go to a different game. Um, I like I'm going against Clemson. I, I That's what stuck out to me. I haven't released it yet as a premium play. Gonna, here's the, I'm going to let you know that right now. Um, haven't bet it yet. But I'm looking at the Virginia Tech side, and the reason for this is, is simple. It's more market than anything else. Um, you know me, I'm not an X's and O's guy. I, I didn't coach NFL or college football, and I didn't play NFL or college football. So I, I do it from a different perspective. Um, and the way I look at it is simple. Joey Lawrence returns last week. Uh, Trevor, Joey Lawrence. Trevor Lawrence <laughs> returns last week. What do you do? Two touchdowns, 400 plus yards. He looks incredible. You're seeing his face all over Sports Center, all over the place. Lawrence is black, back. Clemson is ready. Bring on the playoffs. Bring on Alabama. Bring on everybody else. I get it. And now you're paying for it. Just look at the betting line. And we have a perfect matchup to compare it to. Just last week, Clemson played Pitt. They were 24-point favorites at home. Well, Virginia Tech's last game, guess what? They played Pitt as well. They were at Pitt. They were six and a half point favorites. Forget the outcome. Remember, outcomes are meaningless. Independent outcomes. Multiple outcomes, maybe. Independent outcomes, put it aside. Um, just compare those two point spreads and tell me how you come up with this one, what it is today. Except off the fact that one team crushed Pittsburgh, the other one didn't, which we know you're not supposed to overreact. That's why odds makers and casinos have done so well. They don't fall prey to recency bias, um, but they know what the public does, the recreational casual bettors do, and they shade the line towards that bias to take advantage of it. And that's what they did here. Again, simply look at the line with Clemson versus Pitt. Look at the line Virginia Tech versus Pitt, factoring your home field advantage and what have you, and tell me why Clemson's over a three touchdown favorite this week. It's just way too many points. Give me Pittsburgh. Um, I mean, Virginia Tech, sorry. I, again, haven't bet them, not a premium play yet, uh, but that side jumped out at me for sure. 
All right, great stuff, guys. When we return, it is gonna be the recap segment for those of you that are too lazy to watch the entire show and just scroll to the end. <laughs> Who will finish 2020 ranked number one overall profit across all sports? Yanni the Greek and Rob Vino, they've been battling back and forth all year long for that top spot. Currently, though, Yanni the Greek is at 246% in profit and Rob Vino is at 210%. That's a total combined bankroll increase of their clients of over 456%. We want to give you a chance to lock in the nation's top two handicappers in 2020 for the rest of the calendar year for only $398. That is a $300 discount, and this offer will include all client releases, including 5% best bets from both Yanni the Greek and Rob Vino. All right, guys, as always, we appreciate you watching the show. We're going to re- cap everything for you now. Now there is no primetime Thursday game due to the crazy NFL schedule. We have one primetime game for Sunday, obviously. The Chiefs at home, double digit favorites to the Denver Broncos, looking like current line is 14. BR says he leans towards Denver, but he's not going to get to the window of this one. And Marco says the under looks like the play. And in one of our more profitable segments, Marco is going to take an unconventional teaser. He's going to take the Browns up to 11 and a half, San Fran up to eight and a half. VR says it looks too easy to tease the Raiders down to one and a half. San Fran up to eight and a half. And I'm going to steal both those guys, San Fran, and put them in a teaser with the Arizona Cardinals. VR steam game of the week, Indianapolis minus three, now up to three and a half. And he said the sky's the limit for this one. It's probably headed to four. So jump on that one soon. And I love that the deli's back open and I really love that the sandwich game this week is Washington plus 10. We've got some barking dogs, which has been a great segment for us. Cleveland plus five and a half is probably headed to six is Marco's barking dog. And VR says, look, he doesn't love the Detroit Lions, but who are the Chicago Bears to be laying three in a divisional game? My best bet for this week, NFL week 13, the Washington football team. Marco says he agrees with the steam game of the week. He's taking the Indianapolis Colts. And this one scares me because I liked the Atlanta Falcons plus three at home, but VR says, no, ma'am, the move is the New Orleans Saints minus three. As far as college football bets, best bets go, I'm playing off that big emotional win with the Iowa State Cyclones. I'm going to take the West Virginia Mountaineers plus seven. Marco says, do not buy the hype with this zero win Utah team. Lay the double digits here. And VR says, look, guys, we know Clemson is one of the better teams in the country, but Va Tech plus 22 and a half at home is just too many points. Again, guys, each and every week, we appreciate you tuning in, hanging out with us, jump in the chat, tell us what you think of the show, smash that like button, as VR would say. And for Marco, Ralph, VR, myself, we can't wait to see you guys on Monday night. Cough, cough. Maybe we uh, start a Sunday morning segment just for VR. I got to get that one cleared with our producers. All jokes aside, we'll see you guys on Monday. Until next time, bet on it.